quick video. So if you've never changed a motorcycle tire before, don't let it intimidate you that bad. As long as you break the bead, street bike tires are actually, or tubeless tires are easier to change than a tube tire. This thing's uh, called Poppin' Beads and I welded this. It's got a little end of a old crowbar on there. And it's a square into a round and a solid shaft. So that's what that looks like. It's like a pounder. It's supposed to pop this bead off. I made it for it. Today I'm actually going to try it and uh, see if it actually pops the bead off. So we'll check it out. We're doing a Grom tire today. So here's the bead. Dry, just pull it off. Act. I usually use WD-40, it's my favorite, but all I have is this SC-1. It's like a polisher cleaner, but it's pretty uh, slippery. What I like to do is uh, do that and spray it up a little bit, actually enough to let it drip. And I like to uh, just kind of press down a little bit and let it start to uh, kind of get in there and maybe start loosening it up in one spot. So even if you can pry that down like that, and then spray a little bit of that in there and let it drip in there. That'll help uh, break the seal. I think what I'm gonna do in addition to this is I'm gonna put a crossbar on here and put a stepper on it so I can put extra pressure on this while I uh, pound it down. Cause I think a little bit of pre-force would work well, but I'm just gonna give this a hit now and see what happens. Huh, it worked. <laughs> Can you believe that? This thing is homemade. But uh it definitely got in there. I'll flip it over. I'm not gonna take the rotor off or really stack it up. I guess I could put some two by fours in bricks or something over here so the rotor sides down. Maybe that'll be a good idea. Let me set this up. Give me one minute. Got this uh, set up with a little bit of cardboard. We'll do the same thing. Give it a little spray. The other side still sealed on. So I'm gonna do that prying thing. I think that worked really good last time. I'm gonna do that same technique. Try to get in here and spray some of this in here. Unbelievable. Got it again. Look at that. There you go. That's the hardest part. All right. Give me a second. Uh, there's different brands of tire irons you can get. Got this at uh, Cycle Gear. It's like 15 bucks. Actually, a friend got this for me. It's pretty nice. Call it like a spoon. The standard little, this is like a Ken tool, tire tool, pretty nice. This one's a homemade one I ground down and put a little slot in here to help grab like the bead and stuff. This one's just a straight, it's like slide bar. And this other uh, homemade one I use. So my favorite ones are this one and this one and this little spoon to kind of help. The rim in the center is um, in a deeper spot than the outside edge. So whatever edge you're working on, just try to either put your knee down there and push it down that direction and make sure that this part goes all the way in so this part has room to come out. And I'll usually start on the side that doesn't have a sprocket <clears throat> and the most room to put the irons when they fold back, opposite of the rotor. Uh, so I usually will just start with one and I'll usually spray something kind of slippery in here like this stuff. 
and this is kind of a smaller tire. And you're going to want a starter. It's kind of the key. Once you get one going, it uh, goes pretty quick. So just put your knee over there. And when you get this one kind of started, go ahead and swap it for a small one. And then when you get that edge um, rolled up like that, just leave that one there to like hold it. And then just start working your way around like this. Take your little iron out. And so that side's already done. So that side's off already. So then what I do is I flip this over and there's several different methods I guess you could do, but the one that works for me pretty good is to take like one of these bars and I usually just go all the way in and I'll spray some of this on the inside too. You can kind of pry this around and work your way around. I usually just try to get this like that. And what I'll do is I'll press down on this edge right here and I'll kind of spray this edge where it's kind of slippery. So I'll take this and I'll actually just kind of go as far as I can with that. Now when you get it like that, it's harder to pry in from that edge. But if you push right here and just kind of lift that up as you go, it'll it'll start to come off. Here, let me get my arm out of the way. So just hold pressure on that. And then come from under here and just kind of nudge this up like this. Kind of work your way around. There you go that's how i do it so pretty simple gets it removed oh look at all those tire plugs in there <laughs> look at all those you can hardly even tell on the side little spots right there what all the tire plugs look like inside whether you pull them down to the end or whether you leave them long I guess they'll, they'll all depend what they look like some are definitely harder to pull out Pull that red one out. Red one came out. Well, some are in a lot better than others. But they all are pulling out. Yep, so there's all the tire plugs pulled out. Pinched in the tire. get ready to put this tire on. All right, so we've got the new tire. Parts Unlimited, I ordered this, uh, no, actually I got this on sale at the local shop, 44, what does that say, 44 bucks? So that's my ground tire, 130, 70, 12. Now I think putting the tires on is easier than taking them on. We'll just burn that off later. So what I look at, uh, see if there's an arrow on here, and if it says, uh, tire rotation so if the tire is on the bike it's supposed to be rolling forward that way and my sprocket is on that side of the bike so what needs to happen is that needs to go in like that that way when you put it on it's the right direction all right so I, um, <clears throat> I'll polish it up a little bit anyway so it's a little bit cleaned up. We'll get this out of the way. Tire orientation is right, so we're spinning this direction. Rotor's gonna be over here. So what I typically do is I'll just spray this area. Get it uh, nice and lubed up. 
and then I'll just jam this in here, like one end, and then just press it down as much as you can, and try to get it to beat itself on there the best you can do it. You can see in here how much it needs to go in. So about that far. So we've got a good start. So what you've got to do now is just sneak a little iron in here one at a time. I usually grab this one that has a little lip and just uh, get in here a small amount at a time and start prying that on and then boom. So that one side's already popped in. Look at that. And so now this is the side that uh, has to go in here. So now what I'll do is I'll spray this again. Get everything nice and moved up. And this is going to be the side where you want to uh, kind of put your knee in here to hold it down and get as much as you can get started um, just kind of by hand. Kind of use your knee to kind of press that over and get a good start. All right, so I'll leave one, one knee right here where I have it locked in. I'm going to go for just a bite over here and start getting this in. And I'll just keep moving my knee to pin it down. It's moving right along. And when it gets to the point where it wants to back out, like it doesn't want to go in anymore or it starts sliding back, then you'll, uh, you'll replace it with one of these small ones. And so just kind of do little bites like this. And if I have to leave that one there, I'll leave that one there. And then make sure you push down all the way with your knee so we have enough room for the tire to come over. And now sometimes I'll just hold that down and see how it goes moving one direction and just keep pinning down the last end. So I'll usually put this in here and then slide it over. Smaller bites are better. It'll help you uh, advance easier without messing up your bead when you're prying this tire in here. So just keep working your way around. Put your knee in there and make sure that uh, has plenty of uh, room to come over there and slide this under and just keep going. Just keep chasing that around with your knee and then putting your little bar in here to hold it. And then this looks like a, it might go here at one time now or close to it. So pop that up over the ledge. Done. So that's it. Before I air it up, I'll usually um, hold that down like that and spray a little bit of this in here so it gets a nice good bead. And this side's already wanting to already beat itself, so let's go ahead and push that in there. Make sure you can get down in there like that. And I'll go fire up the compressor and we'll beat it. Give me one sec. All right, so fire this up. Okay, it looks like it's got plenty of air. So we've uh, sprayed both sides. They're pretty fresh. We'll just kind of take a look, make sure there's nothing in between here. Looks like it's ready to bead. And we're, we're going to wait for this to just seal and pop. So you're wondering, you know, how is this going to seal when there's no, nothing uh, like to push it in? Well, you just kind of have to mess around with it a little bit. You're going to have to spray some of the liquid in there, blast some air in there, um, push down on it until you can get to a spot where it grabs and then it'll push the air through. So sometimes you have to sit on it or bounce it around or do whatever, but we're just going to give it a shot. So we'll check it with this in a minute. I'll probably go for like 30 PSI to beat it, but we'll just see how it goes trying to put some air in. Right. Let's give it a shot. So let's leave it down there and see if it does it automatically. Yep, it's going to do it. So you can see this uh, right here. So you're going to want to watch this, and this is going to pop up there and pop the bead on. And you might have to wait to hear it twice because it's starting to do it. So you can see this edge right here. So that's where it's starting to seal and then the air pressure is going to pop it out and snap it up on there so we're going to listen for like two 
two popping noises. I'll try to leave one right there so we can see it. Or maybe this one's the best one. Yeah, there's a huge gap right there. So we're just gonna listen for two pops. Hang on. Okay, so two pops. So what we want to do is look around and um, see if they're both on. Usually when they pop, they're on though. So they're on there. Now we don't have that much pressure, but we're just going to check it just to kind of get a gauge so we don't overfill it. it says it's at uh, 28. So by the time it beat it, it was almost done. So let's see what that did. The load range is, um, it says 40 PSI cold, but I do recommend using maximum pressure to um, beat it. So that's 30. We're just gonna pop 10 more in and then we'll let some out. Okay, so that was 40, actually 40, yeah, 40. So we're going to, um, this thing has this little thing on the side that'll let air out, or you can turn it around and poke it with that little piece. So we're at 30, and I'm going to run 30 in here. So that's it. That's how to change your tire with the simple hand tools, with a couple tire irons you can even make yourself. Pretty cheap to go get at the shop. Um, but anyway, I just saved a bunch of money and a bunch of time. I was able to change this in my garage uh, right here in front of you, and you saw within just a few minutes how easy it was to take the bead off and how easy it was to actually install this tire. So... This thing is ready to go. And here's the bike. We'll be putting that um, back together here shortly. Uh, one more quick tip. The sprocket has this little hub in here. Always make sure you don't lose this spacer. You're going to have really big problems if you do. It won't pinch together right. So pay attention to your spacers when they come out and um, know that when you put them back together, uh, where they went. And there's a, another spacer over here. And if I were doing the whole tire assembly, I would basically clean all of this stuff up, clean my sprockets, clean my chain, clean around all these seal areas, which I will, um, and put some fresh grease on those. Another thing you wanna do is after you're done doing this whole entire thing, uh, go ahead and clean your rotor off. So your brake pads have a good chance not to get anything on them. Put your air screw and your cap back on. I guess you could spray this with water and see if it's leaking. I usually just check the air later and see if it's sealed. Uh, put some fresh grease around this little O-ring right here before you snap that back on. Uh, locate your other spacer over on this side and make sure that spacer is on the rotor side before you put everything together. And then I'll usually clean that axle bolt right there. I'll usually grease these little slides that go in here for the chain adjuster. I'll usually spray my brake pads down and push the pads back a little bit and kind of clean up around that area um, and clean everything and clean your chain and then adjust your chain properly. Tighten your axle bolt down and uh, make sure your axle bolt's nice and tight. I know I didn't show that, but um, those are some of the things that I do. All right, so I ended up cleaning everything up and I figured I'd gone this far. I wasn't gonna do a whole tire install but if you haven't changed the tire like off of the rim then maybe you haven't put a tire on either a prepped one so um this is what i do i just take some of this grease you can get any kind of grease you want but i use this valvoline multi-purpose grease disc brake wheel bearing steering linkage chassis suspension joints so basically anything where this metal is going to slide <clears throat> like in the swing arm i just take a little bit and uh, just grease these up a little bit. It's nothing, you know, too special. It's just better to have a little grease in there than none to prevent sticky parts and uh, rust and corrosion, nice free 
pretty smooth running parts. Easily puts them on the axle bolt. You don't want to go too crazy either. And then on these, let's get a little bit in here. And if you want to put a little extra in this dust seal, you can pack a little bit of extra grease back behind this seal here. On the sprocket side, it doesn't matter as much if you put a little extra because it'll just make your sprocket dirty, but you want, you don't want to overdo it on the uh, on the um, rotor side. So just pop that back in. It's looking good with some nice grease. And then this <clears throat> piece in here just shims right in like that. That's the piece not to forget because it won't bolt down right. So that's this side. And then those are the two chain adjusters. And that's going to be the nut and bolt for the, or the nut for the other side. So I've taken this one over here that's in the tire. You have one on this side also. And you want to take a little bit of grease if you feel like it and pack just a little bit in there. A little bit extra never hurts. And then put some on the uh, little metal piece right there spacer and then go ahead and just pop that in there like that so now those are all lubed up those are ready to go you're not gonna have any bad seals or anything like that I'm gonna end up putting the cap on and um, you can go ahead and spray this rotor off with some carb cleaner um, this one's actually out but they do have um, anything that's gonna clean like this Mass airflow sensor cleaner, carb cleaner, brake cleaner. So if you have any grease or anything on your rotor, you don't want to get on your brake pads. Clean off any residue from like touching it. Uh, you can wipe it down with the paper towel, but if you can see it evaporates pretty quickly. So depending on how clean you want it and how far you want to go, that's up to you. But that gives you an idea. So anyway, both uh, bearings are shims or spacers are lubed up um, all the spacers are placed in the sprocket and everything like that and when you come back over here to this side and you want to go and put these in it's called the cush drive make sure all these little stars line up with these little brackets like this make sure your spacers in there actually see this little o-ring right here that's what keeps uh things separated from any grease flying out of there so go ahead and put a little on there too all right and then just go ahead and get ready to line this up should hear it kind of snap in oh, there it's kind of snapped in right there now that's about it the time to just basically install it so move the camera over here and see if we can get to that basically want to slide this in and get your chain over there if you've already taken it off you're pretty close line up your uh, caliper and with your disc pop it in there and adjust it um, but otherwise those are the things to grease all right so we're just gonna get ready to start this uh, tire back on here check for your uh, shims spacers and then you slide your chain adjusters in I usually start my bolt just right there in the uh, eye hole. So when you go to grab it later, it's already ready to go and just make sure it's flush on the inside like that. And then to get my tire a little bit closer and past the caliper, I'll usually start with like a brick. Like this. Get it kind of close. And see if I can start it up over the uh, tire here and get it onto the sprocket. Okay, so now it's on the sprocket. Spacer lined up, the caliper's locked in, the uh, rotor's in the right spot and my spacer is coming up right here so now here's where this bag comes in so you just pump this bag up and we're going to be able to slide this axle bolt in here in a second make sure you're not wedged nice and straight okay so i think we're getting close to being lined up now so i'm gonna 
slide this back and uh, see if I can get this axle bolt in here now. Perfect. Okay, so we've got this started now, so that's really good. Just take your hand and hit that now. As you come across the other side, just kind of make sure you're lined up. There we go. Okay, now we're in. So that's it. So your tire's in there. You've got your chain adjuster on. Go ahead and throw your nut back on there. And that way you don't have to loosen your chain adjusters. If your chain was already adjusted nice, which mine is a little loose, I never adjusted my chain adjusters. If you pull the bolt out, everything will roll forward so your chain will just come off of there. And then if you push it all the way in and then put your chain on, you can slide it back and use your same adjustments. So in my case, that's going to be really good because all I have to do is pop this back in. I don't have to mess with these at all. Tighten my axle bolts up and I'm gone. Probably should adjust that a little bit though. So if you need to do that, go ahead and crack this little nut. It's a safety nut. And there's little lines right here. And you line up your little lines um, on the inside of there evenly on both sides. Then you tighten that up. It's usually like a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter. And then tighten them up for the other. We've got a 10 and a 12, so just crack this 10. And there's little lines in here, and you're going to watch them go back as you screw this in. But usually I'll try to go in increments of half turns, so I'll hang the wrench down and go one half. That's if they didn't never moved when you took them off, but go about a half at a time. And never make it as tight, because whenever you tighten the axle bolt, it ends up getting tighter. So you usually just go a hair shy of what you want. So that's one full turn. And I'm going to look at the lines where the swing arm is. You can see where the lines are. I'm going to go another half turn and call it good. That's probably a little too tight. So I'm going to back it off like a quarter. And then I'm going to look at the lines on each side and I'm like one and a half and one and a half and that's really good so that's fine so i'm going to go and hit that in there like that and then just hold this down while you tighten this up okay that's pretty tight i like that and go ahead and hold your 12 lock down your 10 on both sides go ahead and pop your airbag out Slide your brick out and then go ahead and spin it and see if uh, you can hear anything unusual or anything grinding. Um, it's not working right. You can wipe up any excess grease you see anywhere. Make sure your chain looks like it's in alignment. And then go ahead and while you're here, hit your brake pedal a couple times. Especially if you spread your pads apart because they won't work the first couple times. And then usually when I'm completely done with that, I will take my spray, spray that rotor off one more time. Just make sure nothing's on there, even the brake pads a little bit, and then just let it drip dry. And that's good. So I'm going to let the thing down, and it's on a bunch of bricks, so I'm just going to probably like kick them out of my way. Changing. Hope you enjoyed the video. It's how to change your tire on your uh, little motorcycle from start to finish. Well, I didn't show me taking it off, but I think you get the point. Chain's really dirty. I could clean that chain up in the wheel a little bit better, but for the most part, uh, everything's tightened up. Chain adjust is adjusted really nice. Might be a little on the tight side, but it'll definitely stretch out. Caliper's looking really good. Everything's looking nice. Hope you enjoyed the video.
they always say your tires are a little slick when you start off so be careful this one's look like, like it's starting to hook up in the center but you want to go and be careful when you get on these edges don't just go out there and corner your first time and crash it's really slippery but that's nice and tacky i'll probably go do some burnouts around the sides too scrub it in that's it there's your tire change hope you enjoyed that when I'm done with this tire and done plugging it and riding and doing everything else, we'll probably do a big burnout and blow this one up. All right, so here's the tool that I used. If anybody's willing to make this tool so you can pop your own beads, I'm gonna give you a couple measurements and kind of what it looks like so you can uh, make your own if you want to. This piece that was looks like a crowbar is about four and a half inches and it's got that bend. And then this right here is, uh, inch and a half square and the inch and a half square piece is 26 inches long and let me flip around here and the round piece of pipe is an inch and five eighths outer diameter and it's about 11 and a quarter inches long and it has a flat piece welded on the top of that square so when this hammer goes up and down it will hit that so then there's the handle I just cut it out of the same piece of pipe and then I welded this smaller diameter solid handle on so the handle is about seven and a half inches long and then the little tapping piece right here which you actually don't even need that but it's on there um, this piece when I pull it out, let's see what it is. So that's the hammering action. And the hammering piece is about 16 inches long. And that's only about 11 and a half. So when it goes in here, um, you don't slam your fingers. Like if you if you this could pinch, you'd probably cut your finger and pinch it really bad. If I were going to make this again, though, I, I do want to give you a little bit of uh, advice I would do differently. I would make this piece, the uh, piece that's, what was that, 11 inches long. I would probably go at least six more, maybe even longer, just so you don't pull this piece out. And it will also make it a little bit heavier, too, but it has a good slide and hammer action, as you saw. Um, and if anything else, I was thinking about linking like a small chain right here and finding out how far it went up so it would, wouldn't come out and maybe leaving it in there like an inch and then attaching a small chain from here to here. That way you can't extend it out and like miss like whoa. Well. Uh, but otherwise, that's the popping bead bar. Looks like I welded a quarter on the end of here. For a cap. Um, and that's the bar, and that's what you do with it. So, if you end up wanting to make one of these at home and pop your own beads off, great tool. Just thought I'd give you the specs on that in case you wanted to go to your recycler or get some extra metal. And this piece right here fits inside of an inch and five eighths. This is a piece of fence pipe, it's an inch and five eighths, schedule 40 outer diameter but um that solid metal bar i bought at the recyclers about i'm gonna call that an inch and i want to say it's right under maybe like three eighths it's about an inch and three eighths uh, and it slides really nice right in there so anyway that's it, that's how to change the tire, that's how to, the tire irons I use, it's the air compressor setup, pretty simple. Nice little porter cable, we'll beat a tire like that, so will this little teeny little hot dog compressor. And some basic tools, and uh, you'll have your bike back together in no time at all. I'm gonna be throwing this tire on here in just a second, and I'll be out riding. Uh, I'm not really worried about balancing it or anything, because. The bike's not even, it barely even does 55 miles an hour. Um, so that's it. If you guys uh, found the video helpful, that's awesome. Um, I've been changing tires for a little while myself and I've saved thousands of dollars over the years and it's 
actually pretty pretty nice to know how to change your own tire. Uh, you don't have to go and ask anybody else besides saving money. Uh, you get to do it yourself and ride it home and then go ride. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one.